The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Believe it or not, we're in an environment right now. It's almost like a false sense of security is being pumped up with a lot of people. I can tell you right now that sense of security that people have is going to be shattered painfully. It will. Hear me on this. There's no way we can continue to separate ourselves from the living God knowingly and have no consequences. It doesn't work that way. If God's word is true, he will correct his children. And God's correction can sometimes be harsh. You have to always remember that the Lord wants our souls saved. Our flesh is doomed. It's going to perish. It's doomed. It's kaput. But your soul is eternal. You do not stop. You don't go to sleep and never wake up and all this stuff, right? You continue. You transition and continue. Good or bad, you continue. And the Lord wants our souls saved. So if it will cost us everything in our lives, if it costs us everything, that's nothing in comparison to a person spending eternity separated from all light, all love, all hope, there's nothing like that. You know, that, that's, there's no comparison. The Lord does not want any of us to perish. And so if, it's, if it costs us everything in life, then so be it. So be it. A lot of people look at that backward. They think that the flesh is this eternal vessel. We're going to live forever in our flesh or something like that. No, 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 no. You're, you're in a temporary vessel made specifically for the earth. Your true form is not known to mankind. You will be in your true form. But the Lord wants your souls saved. He wants you fully redeemed. Which means all of us started out lost. And we're now separated from the love of God. But he loved us first. And he desires us to be fully redeemed. That's what this whole thing is about. He wants us redeemed. Once our souls are secured in him, then we're going to go. And that's something that we maintain. is something that we choose. That's why no person should impress upon another telling them hey you've got to be this and you've got to be this no it should be a person's choice it's not real if i coerce you into making a choice it's not your choice and it's not genuine what the lord does he does by uh, a very genuine nature whatever the lord does he does by way of genuine roots but he expects of us the same thing he allows us to say no he does he allows a person to say no. He allows a person to enter into sin. But he desires us to be fully redeemed. That's why it said, when you see, when you begin to see all these things come to pass, look up and lift up your head for what? What does it say? For your redemption draweth nigh. For your redemption is coming close. Draweth nigh is coming close. He didn't say you were fully redeemed on the earth. That's not what he said. He said your redemption draweth nigh. That means this process is not complete until you are fully transitioned. That's why he said, those who run and faint not, he that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. If you give up, how can there be salvation for that person who gives up? Who can't be? Father does not work in the domain of imagination, but truth. If we give up, it's our choice to do so. How can we ever go and be a part of his kingdom if we give up. And again, the scripture says, he that endures until the end, the same shall be saved. Whoever it is that continues to the very end, that person is going to be saved. And that means you're right. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. We know that droves of people leave the earth every single day. You know, that thought just, it gets me a lot, right? It does. Because people leave to go and be with the Lord every single day. And I'm still stuck here. Every single day, they do. The race is finished. I'm going to do a complete job with this race, honey. I'm going to do a complete job. And hopefully you guys are disciplined enough to help me do that. It takes all of us. Just because I'm speaking on the microphone does not make my solution the best solution. No, no, no. It does not mean I know every single step that I'm taking. It does not mean everything I do is correct. It takes all of us. And it takes you being honest, you being real and true, grounded in Christ to assist, to not be afraid, to 
remind, to encourage, to edify, takes all of us. This isn't some one person job here. That's not what this is. This takes all of us. I just happen to take great joy in doing it. I do. Back to the water event. See how fast I drift? The water event this is my belief. I know that it's going to be a very misunderstood thing. People are going to be frightened into believing that somehow it happened. When the, when the water event hits, it's going to be global all at one time. There will not be a spot on this earth a person will be able to step and not have water touch them. But then it will go away. The great war will also begin. It's going to cost lots of lives. I've noticed something else too that I'm going to have to tackle a subject so that you guys are not frightened at all because it's a very frightening subject. It has nothing to do with space. It has everything to do with Earth and the life forms in the Earth. So let me give an example because I want you guys grounded where you, you don't have fear. Fear will incapacitate you. Fear can cause you to make some pretty uh, drastic decisions. It'll make you, you know, it'll cause you to become a selfish person. It can also cause you to become a murderer of others. Nobody wants that for anybody. Okay? Now, let me give you guys an example. Since the stories are coming out anyway, there's no way they can hold the stories back. And I cannot explain these stories. You'll just have to, have to hear them as they are uh, presented. Animals are beginning to kill people viciously. And for some reason, uh, I, I, maybe because everybody has a device, people are recording, have inadvertently recorded themselves being killed by animals. This is going to get out. You guys know what kind of uh, society we live in. And the hunger of media. And the hunger of those who like entertainment. It will get out. It is uh, It's very unfortunate. It is. But nevertheless, it's happening more and more and more. I have, you know, it, it's always disturbing for me to have knowledge of these things, to, to see them. And the first time I ever reviewed one of these uh, captures, the same screams I've only heard in dreams that no human being that I'm aware of has ever screamed like that. The, the same scream that these people who are being killed, that same scream that they scream with, I've only heard in dreams. I mean, it's almost impossible to believe that a human being can scream at that high of a pitch. Now, I've noticed something, guys. Now, follow me on this because you're going to learn about, you're going to hear about uh, people who were killed by bears. I mean, to the point of death. Uh, for example, there's a guy and his wife. I believe there are four or five sets of these, this same story. A man and his wife killed by bears. I believe there, there are four different uh, sets of these. Can you imagine? And it's recorded. The character of these people, because every time I see something like that, right? I have to know. I have to know what the real deal is. I'll never see a, see a story like this and just assume it can happen to anybody. I went back and looked at that one person's life. This guy was a foul-mouthed individual. He was full of rage and anger. And again, he was foul-mouthed. He was. He was defiant. This guy was ruthless. He cared only about himself. He didn't care what he had to use to promote himself, him and his wife. And they paid dearly for that. Their sufferings lasted for about two or three minutes, and both were consumed by the bears afterward. This happened, you know, four or five different times to four or five different couples. That's only with the bears. There have been lots of other stories. I mean lots. You'd be surprised how many people have died and recorded it at the hands of animals. My firm belief is this. Those people who continue to sow discord those people who continue to utilize this power of violence and rage is a very dark thing. Those people who will easily attack other folks will be attacked themselves and there's no escape for them. We know that in Revelation it says that a portion of mankind is going to die and animals are mentioned by the beasts of the earth. They're going to die by the beasts of the earth. Yes, our Father is allowing it. Jesus is the one that opens the seals, and these things begin to happen. It's our Savior who opens the seals. More now than ever, you should see why it's important. The Lord said he has to have us secure. He'll have us secured first. Then all these worst things are unleashed. So his, his, his number one priority in the New Testament, right? 
given by the prophets to the people is that those who choose to accept that final sacrifice, who is Jesus Christ, that they be secured within him. In other words, those that believe. If you truly believe, you're going to have the outcome that Christ spoke of. If you truly re are rebellious in nature against the living God, then your outcome is going to be just as it is, it is uh, described in Revelation. So here we are. And I hope you guys understand that. I really do. If you may hear more and more of these stories, I can already perceive people are going to be quite unsettled by this and quite fearful. Many are going to have to put their pets down. Those are the type days that are coming. Also take note that Jesus warned us. He told us in a time that people are not aware of these things will begin to happen. In other words, there's going to be no prep time for people to get ready for this. You're the ones that have prep time. He's giving you prep time. You know about these things already. It's going to be too late for the world. They will make their choice. These days are coming. They're happening already. And it is, uh, you know, now on the opposite side of that, there have been lots of people, for example, there was a guy and a grizzly, he approached a grizzly. The grizzly basically essentially asked this guy for help upon helping this grizzly, right? These are beautiful stories, but upon helping this grizzly, the grizzly protected this man from a set of coyotes and then a set of wolves. Beautiful thing. Uh, another person, a bear, bought a cub to a guy and laid the cub before him and nudged the cub over to the guy. The guy said the cub was unresponsive. So it took this guy three days to get the baby back up to par again. And the mama bear, which was quite large, was watching the entire time. All of a sudden, these poachers, I believe the story was, these poachers, which is why the small little tiny bear got poisoned in the first place. These poachers came and they were harassing this guy. When that happened, the mama bear came out of the bushes and dealt with the other two, scared them off. When the, when the, those, those, um, poachers left this guy alone, the mama bear left and the guy was just blown away. He was scared to death. He rendered aid to the cub. The mama bear dropped that cub in front of him and nudged the baby over to him. As if to say, can you please help? I believe the Lord put it in that animal to do that. In fact, I believe that the Lord's decrees rest within his creation. That's what I believe. I believe that. The Lord's decrees do that. Somebody said they saw a video like that. Yeah. That one story was back from the 70s. Another story is from the 80s. Come to find out it's quite common when animals have trouble with their children from lions imagine a lion or a lioness i'm sorry bringing a, a, a cub to a human being can you imagine a lion that they once called a man eater getting help from someone because they can't extract something out of the paw in one case one lion with the lion obviously had a brother and they the lion went found someone and he would roar at the people and then turn around and walk away and look back like follow me so they started to follow this thing and it took him to his brother lion who was sick they ended up pumping the stomach of the lion because it, it was something weird. Evidently, a bone got lodged in the wrong way or something. It just messed up his whole digestive tract uh, and infected his the, the lion's stomach and stuff. Anyway, they fixed this guy. And when they released uh, the one lion because he was coming to, the lion didn't make a move. He sat up still. He was coming to. He did not make a move. They took the lion and put him out on the ground. The lion did not make a move. When they stepped back, when they walked away and got back in the vehicle and drove away, the lion stood up and looked back and his brother came. And both those lions watched them leave. And it's almost like those two lions bowed their heads to the human beings as they went away. So it's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. It is a snake. Of all things, a snake, a poisonous snake. What? An aggressive poisonous snake. They've been known to ask people for water. And people give the snake water, not, not really knowing it's what, well, when in certain cases, some of the most poisonous snakes and the most aggressive snakes on the earth. And when the people give the snake water, the snake is non-aggressive. They, when an animal does that, they normally stay still so they don't alarm you. So it's almost like they can perceive. I believe they can perceive how you feel to an animal. Emotions are language, or it's interpreted different ways. But the Lord is quite amazing and his creation is so straightforward the complication is us us why is it always us i think in part because we're always trying to become experts on somebody else's stuff 
you guys know when you were growing up and you had these good ideas and then somebody would come from nowhere they would become the instant expert on how what you're doing is not going to work anybody have people like that in their lives you get all you get happy and you're sharing your idea with a, another person and all of a sudden they become an expert on how it's not going to work i know people of whom god has called and they have a passion for the calling and as soon as they tell somebody they're calling you have these people that come out of the woodwork that become instant experts on how they'll never make it in that calling. We are the complicating factor. Nature does exactly what God intended it to do. We are the elements out of place due to pride and arrogance. We do, we think we know it all. Yes, even in the church. Because you'll have one person that mentions a scripture and they'll give their idea behind it. Another person will come back and say, well, that's not what it means. It means this. We are the complicating factor. If we would simplify ourselves, and I hope that you guys are doing that, by the way, simplifying your lives, let go of the burdens and simplify your lives so that you're not, you're not so heavy going into this time coming. I hope that you're simplifying your lives. But if we would just take a step back and acknowledge what the Lord has already done and learn to appreciate what the Lord has set in motion, if you, if you take note of something, God initialized creation, but he left a lot of room for us to have dominion over creation. Have you noticed that? He left a lot of room. All we have to do is believe in him first. To believe in him is to believe that, yes, this is his creation. Then look for his fingerprints, his very consistent fingerprints in creation. You'll notice all of creation conforms to his word. All of it does. And by that same word, you can maximize everything you do in creation. It is when you're among people, you begin to compete, and they demand an explanation for everything you do. Well, it just so happens that most of the most genuine act that has ever been, or will ever, ever will be for that matter, is not really explained. In, in fact, those good acts are never explained. You enjoy it. But people demand an explanation. And when you provide an explanation, somebody's not going to like it. They're going to go against it. We can only return back to innocence that way. But God's creation is incredibly vast. And the animals are telling people every day. They're sending people a message. I believe that the word of God is told by God's creation every day. I believe that. For example, the, the animals right now, the migration patterns have altered. They have changed, which, by the way, is prophecy in Burr. If we would only simple. But then you take a look at the world. And what do you see, guys? You see complications. How we have taken the simple things. Mistaken them or confused them with these archaic ways that we have. That we impose upon them. And we do that for control. We also do it so we can... Who, what other species would ever take another species? Enslave it just to, you know, enhance their homes or something. That's us. We assume that everything else does not mind. Don't we do that? We assume the poor little fish, they don't mind being captive. We assume animals don't mind being captive. We assume things too much, don't we? If we would only open our eyes and appreciate, not only would we not be blind to these things, but we would have insights beyond belief. Many insights. At any rate, because we are how we are. The Lord's declarations are going forward. And correction must come. If we continue like this, we will will destroy everything. See, I believe that prayer is our petition to the Most High. I do not have vain prayers. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that. Which means, when, when I make a request of the Lord, there's, to this day, there's not been a time where the Lord did not grant me. What I've needed from my request. But there again, I don't ask for anything for me. I ask for things that will arm me sometimes. Things that will help me to help you oftentimes. And what he does in response is astounding. Listen, because you're supposed, you are to have joy no matter what. If something is disturbing your joy, then analyze for yourselves. Something has gone wrong in me. Somebody wrote, this is depressing, but that can't be the only person with that type of uh, you know, outlook on what's happening. Can't be the only person. 
it should be very depressing to just about everybody here. So how do you overcome that? How do you not walk with the sting of depression, even though you're walking in the valley of the shadow of death? I want to ask you guys something before we go forward. Is there anybody here who has not forgiven everybody in their past who has not forgiven everyone? Please let somebody know. Now, I'm going to open up the floor to questions. I'm going to ask another question. Now, we, we are going into these discussions this coming week. Somebody says, uh, somebody wants to know how high of an elevation is the water going to rise? Here's the difficulty with the water event. We know that we have, do you guys understand the general makeup of the earth? I know, I know for some of us, it's, uh, it's going to be new, but most of what's in the earth is very complex structure, land masses. The earth is essentially a huge land mass over the surface. First and foremost, you have basins, which then are the oceans full of water, but essentially the Earth is one big, huge landmass. If you take the water away, everything is connected. The only separation uh, would be those areas that are separated by magma, which will be small areas, but for the most part, everything is one big, huge landmass, still to this day. So hopefully it's not too difficult for you to understand that with no water, if you were to take or evacuate there or, or somehow get rid of the water in the oceans and lakes, you would notice that everything is one huge landmass. The oceans separate continents and that erosive look that ties the continents in like a puzzle, that is, you know, its own purpose is because uh, Earth is essentially like a puzzle and in between the, uh, well, unlike a puzzle, all the pieces are connected. In between the cracks or the, the valleys, you know, you have uh, water, but uh, essentially it's one big landmass. Now, these continental plates, like America, for example, America has uh, at least eight plates in America. And what that means is, underneath the Earth, you have a hyperfluid dynamic that's causing the um, Everything to be like it is, the, the altitude, topology is different because of what's underneath the earth. If the magma continues to churn and water continues to breach the surface and mud volcanoes continue to go off, giving a good indication of severe change underneath their feet. Well, if that were to be exposed, you would understand that some of these uh, states right, within the United States can in fact sink about two or three hundred feet. In some cases, there are places in America that could sink a thousand feet. Now, when you take all this into consideration with a water event, that's a lot of heaviness applied to the rim of a plate. With that type of weight, it's going to cause a shift internally, right? And when that shift takes place, you're going to have certain states that go up maybe 200 feet. 300 feet, 1,000 feet, you're going to have certain states that will drop 1,000 to 2,000 feet. Okay? So, as far as the water level is concerned, it's very difficult to project because we don't have a static planet. Right? We don't have a planet that does not change as far as its, uh, you know, continents and altitude of those continents. But West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, all the way up to New York, Maine, all these places, there is a very intricate system that is watched by the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as institutions around the globe, not just the USA, but around the globe. They know that the Appalachian Mountain chain is very fragile. And underneath that, that mountain structure is magma and some more things. If that were to, if the Earth ever gets charged to the point where it can actually affect low levels of these ranges. Uh, well, because they know this, they know that uh, at some point, these mountain ranges are going to lose altitude in one day. And in that case, everything changes. Everything changes. So the water event would, would uh, you know, it's going to inundate just about everybody. It's not going to be destruction by water. It'll be, even if it were two inches of water over the surface of the earth or land masses, that's a pretty significant deal. Where would that water come from in so vast a time? One of two places. 
either storms are going to move that water in. It's a lot, but we have storms that support that much water. You know, we can essentially take that much water and drop it right on the USA. Or there are these internal oceans with superheated water that are locked up in these, you know, you call them pressure vaults of the earth. With the magma churning, it's going to cause these things, and this is where you get these mud volcanoes. You're going to have uh, more and more places spew out gas and mud things like that all over the usa so there we are with that right it's, it's not so much a question as how high will the water rise when it hits the lip of the usa when it hits the rim of a country is going to disrupt the balance of that country and so topology is going to be changed rapidly okay hopefully that's good enough uh, illustration is the best way to demonstrate what it is. So, so by saying this, I want to make sure that everybody can access the KD Files section in COT. Can you guys do that? The KD Files section is counciloftime.com forward slash zero one forward slash public. I believe it is forward slash KD ASPX. That's where it is. There's a link on the homepage of the KD Files. Everybody should be able to access it. Everybody should be able to. It's in the uh, public section. You have to have an account in COT to access that. But just make sure you know how to access that. Because all this information is going to be put in there. So just make sure, just verify that you can access the KD Files homepage. That's all you have to do. And um, that section is going to fill up nicely in a reasonably short time. So just make sure that you can access that. Questions? What do you guys have for me? How soon do I think for the water event? I think that uh, it's at the door, meaning you already have flying insects being driven up from the earth, all over the earth, right? And it's going to get pretty nasty. You already have that. And this precedes the water event, uh, period. The, the uh, flying insects circling all over the earth. Now, before anybody thinks, yeah, because we're supposed to have a, 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 a biblical plague of locusts. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Lord said. The Lord said, back back during that time of Egypt, that happened in Egypt, there would never be a time like that again. There would never be a time where the insects would swarm like that again. That's a blessing to know. Although I will be covering politics here, it's not going to be in the way that you are maybe used to. I would ask that all of you remember that those leaders who are fragile, and frail that they are just men please remember that so you don't you know bash them all the way back to the stone age we don't do that here if anything we like to conform to the word of god if we don't have a solution it's a wasted conversation question impact you mentioned on pastor well we have a guaranteed impact we do hey guys let's go ahead and face it we can only see uh, again if you were to look at the sky and then take your finger Stretch your arm all the way out. Put your index finger up. Your finger covers the part of the sky that all this money that we have, that's how much of the sky we can track. The spot that's covered up by your finger. The rest, uh, you know, we don't know. But they do on occasion pick up things, right? They pick up things that they cannot share because they know the implications of it. They already know. And uh, they're not going to share some impending doom with anybody they're not doing that somebody says if we forget does that mean we have to let them back into our lives no here it is there are people i've forgiven right now i will not suffer any chaos in my life and anybody who comes around me gets near my environment they always say the same thing i'm not bragging just telling you guys something you're capable of everything and more that i'm capable of but anybody who ever gets around me in my environment they all say the same thing Wow, I can't stay awake. You know, it's so peaceful here because there's no tension, right? There's no eggshells, no anything. I forgive people, yes, but there are certain folks I will not suffer to come back in my environment, not until they change. Mine is based on their acceptance of, of Christ for real. But what that means is it always ends up being that way because the folks, I, I, I just tell them straight out, I like to be blunt with people. I let them know you can't come back in here. You know, you're too full of chaos and you, I won't suffer that in my environment. Uh, I don't let them back in. So I always have peace. Now, it's only one or two people like that in my life. 
the rest of the folks, they say the same thing. And the reason being is because I refuse to target another human being. I'm not going to do Satan's work for him. Satan targets individuals. Satan will target another human being. You know, we can read the Bible all day. And when you do, you find out that humanity is the most precious thing to our Father that ever was. You know how everybody says Israel is the apple of God's eye? I mean, let me tell you something here. Something we're going to be looking at next week is something I want to want you guys to be keenly aware of. Humanity is the apple of God's eye. Humanity is precious. Remember, you've been grafted into the branch. You're not considered an outsider anymore. You're fully adopted. You are the apple of the sign, and then all of you collectively constitute a nation. You do, right? A nation is not a nation if there are no people. A nation is only a nation if there are people. So no matter where the people are, they make up the nation. So that means Israel right now is still scattered abroad. That's what it means until that unifying call comes in. Somebody said peacemakers are blessed, but it takes two to make peace. No, nope, it takes one. It does not take two. I tell you that by experience. I, I, listen, guys, you're capable of doing everything I can do, plus some. You're capable of so much more than I. You are. Peace begins with you. You allow peace to enter into your environment or not. It begins with you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about the other people. You matter, not them. Remember that. It's like saying God's presence requires a bunch of it. No, it requires you. You can become the door by which holiness can enter into any place you step your feet in. Do you know that? You are that door. You are. Remember that, please. Remember that. But it says, uh, does the war come after the water event? I'm not sure. I, I would consider us at war already. But just like Pearl Harbor until somebody smacks us right in the face we consider we we often say we're not involved in the war but we are we're in full support of the war the war machine is cranked up we have people u.s soldiers engaging in combat right now right we're at war let's not get uh tripped up by some of the clever sayings of some people but make the mistake we are at war that will become painfully obvious as the State Department shuts off even more visitations to other nations. They're going to have to. They're going to have a choice. But we can watch all the indications for the war event. You know, in some cases, the date of something happening is not important. For you to understand the process, that's your key, to understand the process. Sometimes it's like, can, can it invite spirits in when you use cuss words? Yes. Yes, again, if you curse, uh, let me tell you something, folks. You do something by a spirit. Everything you do is done in the name of something. Do you hear me? Now, let me ask you something. In what name are you cursing? Because you're doing everything you do, you do in the name of something. Whether you know that or not, everything you do, you're doing in the name of something. If you debate with someone, you're debating in the name of those who started um, the idea of debate, wouldn't you rather, truly, you know how people say, you gotta be your own person, this and the other, wouldn't you truly like to be your own person? Then you have an understanding of what the Lord speaks about concerning when you think, when you do things, you're doing something by one kingdom or the other. There is no in between. If a person is operating for the sake of righteousness, and they have chosen that, then they're operating, they are operating in tandem with righteousness itself and that whole kingdom will back what they're doing the kingdom of righteousness which is our father's kingdom if a person goes out and there they have an evil intent prideful intent some some gross intent then we know that the kingdom of darkness is behind them and will back up what they're doing so yeah you've been doing this all along somebody said i tend to cuss when i get mad or surprised are words uh, able to open up the spirit's influence because it's like witchcraft? Well, a curse word, right? What's the origin of that curse word? Did you know that 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 term apple is a witch term? Did you know that? If you ask a person what does, and you point to an apple you draw on paper and you ask them what, what does that stand for? So well, so you know it's an apple. 
when you look at the origins of that word apple as a translation mixed with an ancient language, we speak it every single day. That's the only thing we know is apple, but it carries these incantation with it. People associate that and use it accordingly. My point is this. When you're cursing, people have not looked up what, what the origins of these curse words are. It's an alternative. It's an expression. Cursing is an expression. It's more than just using a word. It's an expression. It's much like when you look at a person and you call them angrily, you call them stupid or something like that, right? You're expressing something. And so when you curse, you're expressing your alignment with another force altogether. It also means that you have lost your own composure. That's what it means. And notice how you just said you curse when you get mad. Well, when you get mad, then what is the true motivation of your anger? Somebody says, should we say apple? But you have no choice. You assign meaning to everything you say. You do that, right? Despite the origins, you assign meaning to what it is. But if, you're, if you start to utilize words and you don't care about the meaning, but you have some sort of aggressive intent behind those words, I can assure you that those words are going to perform things you never thought they could perform. Our father purposes every communication do the same thing see in the bible it says god watches over his word perform it so have an understanding about what you release out of your mouth number one your children are the king your authorized vessels of the word of god if you release anything it should align with scripture god gave you the authority so that when you speak your words can carry authority begin to utilize and be a citizen of the kingdom bringing the results of the kingdom into this world by conforming to the kingdom yourselves, not by amplifying the confusion and the lying and the adultery and everything else that's in the earth. Don't magnify that. Magnify righteousness with everything that you can as often as you can remember. Can a demon influence or take over AI? Well, that's a good one. And we still did not have our discussion over AI, but I'll say this. Again, electronics... Uh, specifically microprocessors, were largely influenced by how the mind works. And ever since they advanced in neurosciences, as of the last, what, five years, AI has become this container itself, right? It can be influenced because computers can be easily manipulated by emotional things. They were already tested this, which means there's something at work with us in tandem with most of what we do. Ah, uh, somebody is a good one. They say in the exact moment, uh, not after. How do you tell the difference if God is holding you back, keeping you from something for better, or if it is Satan keeping you back in order to discourage you? Satan cannot keep you back. Satan can't do anything to you without God's permission. Always remember that. If Satan had the authority to do to you what he wanted to do without the Father's permission, you would be dead. You would be moved out of the way. So if you are held back in something, your Father is involved. The first thing to evaluate is yourself. Right? Look at that situation. Think about it short term and long term. Also think about obedience. You have to make a distinction within yourselves. Always where you're headed. In what name do you go forward? Here, well, we're going to have to set up a, uh, one of those uh, pretty big forms for these questions like this, guys. How do you know when you have totally forgiven uh, someone? I've been deeply hurt, betrayed by someone more than once. They're no longer in my life, and I'm sincerely trying to forgive them all. How do you know when you've forgiven someone? See, when you haven't forgiven someone, right, it goes like this. I've, had, I've been backstabbed lots of times, right? And they, people used to think it was naive, but I let them think that. Now they know different. When you get backstabbed for the first time, sometimes you, you want to just totally obliterate the person who backstabbed you. You don't wish well upon them. You don't have good thoughts upon them. You really don't. You could care less if that person came around or not. You could care less if you ever saw that person again or not. You could care less if that person had life or not. I'm being straightforward with you, honestly. Uh, there was someone that backstabbed me a long time ago so bad, I care less if that person lived or died. Now on the battlefield, when I go 
to the person's aid? Yes, because of the uniform, not because of the person. That's how it felt. You know, I'd help that person out because they were a fellow soldier, not because of uh, who they were. So if anything were to happen to them, I wouldn't shed a tear at that time. I wouldn't feel sorry for the person or anything else. But then a time came when I truly forgave that person and persons. When that time came out, I often found myself thinking about them, praying, interceding for them, asking the Lord to look to, to grant them the same measure, if not more grace, to them, the same measure of grace He gave me, interceding that way. In other words, saying, Lord, you know, I've been an idiot most of my life, and you have looked beyond, you know, the life I was living. You've looked beyond that. And you did nothing but bestow grace upon me and favor and love towards me and forgiveness. And so when you forgive someone, you start thinking that same way toward them. They just hit your heart in prayer, right? You're not thinking that you're not, you, you want them to come full term. You want them to have every opportunity to make it. You want the Lord to be merciful to them and everything else. That's when you know you've forgiven someone because you want them to make it. That's when you know. When you want a person to make it, that's when you know. That's very, uh, very simple, isn't it? So and that's a very genuine thing, too. When you have not forgiven someone, if something were to happen to them, you wouldn't care. They don't enter your mind when you're in prayer, except to say, Lord, don't let them mess with anybody else this way. When you've truly forgiven someone, truly have, they will come to your mind. You'll have hope for them. You'll intercede for them. That's, uh, hope that's clear enough for everybody. Do you guys see that? So it's this mic for the guaranteed impact that is known can we know when that is anticipated day? No, no, sir. No, no, no. You know why? I, I tell you, what's important is that we're going to have clusters of impacts here on this earth. And I know it's not going to make sense. But when the first impact takes place, right? And we're not talking about, don't think about Hollywood. When we have an impact, then people will truly begin to understand. We cannot see what we thought we could see, right? Now, we can see a lot. We see a lot, but it's so vast out there that we would have to have something sweep at a really accelerated rate to track, quantify its location, all that good stuff, and, and then find the trajectory towards Earth. We'd have to have a lot of, com um, of uh, continuous computing power to do that. Now, for the most part, that little percentage of the sky that is covered, it utilizes a lot of computing power. Right, to extract telemetry from these things and probabilities and outcomes and this, that, and the other, right? Um, artificial intelligence is helping out by tracking objects and then running simulations. Uh, every simulation to see what the absolute, uh, you know, what the absolute danger is with the object. But there's always going to be something you cannot see. No matter what mankind does, he's going to have blind spots. It's those blind spots that have always been the undoing of humanity. People know a lot of objects coming. I have to use the Bible for this because in the Bible, it was always the place they had no mind to look into that got them. It's kind of like it's always that one snake that you never suspected on that specific day at that specific time that bit you. It was not the snakes you knew about. It was not the snakes based upon the habitats that you may have known about. It was that snake that seemingly was out of place at the wrong season, at the wrong time, but, but basically it was in an area you had no mind to look into. Right now, everybody's fixated on these things they know about. If you take careful inventory of the issues on this earth, it's always been the areas you did not think about or the areas that have never been publicized. Those are the areas that have bit humanity multiple times. Never the areas they can see. So what you know about, that's not coming to get you. That's not going to get you. It's what you don't know about. What humanity can see, they're, they're studying things out there right now, like a binary star. They're studying binary systems all over the place. They're fixated on a very special one now because of its influence upon us. A binary star is not going to hit us. That's not the problem. See, but you can't track every object of a solar system. We are still finding things that belong to our solar system. Think about that. We're always finding objects that belong to our solar system. Even as of two days ago, 
they find objects that belong to our solar system. But you can't watch everything. And it's very difficult to tell what belongs to what solar system when they're so far out. So they may not be able to see the dangerous thing. It's just like this Nibiru, planet X or something like that. Suppose it does, it's real, and it has cycles. I can almost assure you it's not what man knows is coming for him. It's what he does not know because the Lord said so. The Lord said that. So then everything mankind finds out about, I know that's not going to be it. That's not going to be it. It's always going to be that one thing that they can never acknowledge, that they don't know about, something they haven't found yet. But that's from observation. Somebody says, what are we going to have when the poles flip? We're going to have water problems. If we go through a physical flip, yes, we'll have water problems. I use that word if, because we have to go over a lot of data so that you guys understand some things. But if the physical earth alters by way of degrees, even about, you know, five degrees abruptly, we're in trouble. Every, there'll be a tsunami on every continent. Every single last one of them. See, I anticipate that people are going to have a very rough time because they really think they have a handle on things. And it just so happens. Folks like myself, we have experience in areas of life that make no sense. Nevertheless, real death and real casualties come from those areas of life. Now, if anybody has ever gone through any of that, of course, if they had an ounce of a heart in them, they're going to want their fellow man not to be overtaken by these things. That would be gut-wrenching to me. That would be heartbreaking and unforgivable. I desire people to be prepared for it, which is why I talk about spiritual things so much. Because the nature of this world is going to change. And those who have not tackled the absolutes, and not this theoretical stuff about spirits, but the reality of what that realm actually is. And when people, you know, who are in this realm begin to interact with it, what can take place? If they don't cover that, then what are they doing? There are people out there right now who have absolutely gone through some very real things, right? And for the most part, people, they're going to get their scoppers because people get scared to death over certain subjects. And see, because when somebody talks about this stuff for real, it's not going to be some, you know, entertainment conversation. It can scare people. The point is not to scare you. The point is to talk about real things you're going to have to contend with that your kids may have to contend with. Somewhere down the road, people are going to have to contend with this, but you're already fighting them right now. You don't even know it. Many of you, now I don't say this to, to down anybody, but if you don't know their, their, their agenda, then guess what? You're helping them right now. I'm not talking about their agenda according to somebody's book who theoretically thinks they're doing something. No, I'm not talking about that. If you don't know what they're doing, you're helping them. I'm telling you right now, you're helping them. Now, how many of you would help out some fallen entity or some demonic entity? Would you really, do you really have a desire to help them out? Because there are so many Christians helping those things, and they don't even know it. The Lord warned us. He warned us. He warned us. He warned us. The Lord gave us some things that we need to know. We keep shutting our minds down to it. A lot of people used to walk away from it. I know a guy like that once. He said, I can't, I can't do this. Oh, it's too late now. You're in the middle of it. Because it's, this is something that once you see it, it will see you. Which is why I do not advise just anybody go on the KD files and start looking at stuff. There are certain things that are going to be on lockdown only to those who really consent to being scared to death. You know, some of the material is going to be more than horrifying. It can absolutely change the way you look at the world going forward. People are going to have to agree to something. I do that because it's not some game. And everybody here on this earth, whether they know it or not, they're entangled with these things. Many will not escape them. But many others, still others, will do anything to stand against them. You have to recognize the authority of Christ to stand against them. And you can't just freely curse and do all that stuff. No, you'll weaken your own shield when you do that. And without the helmet of salvation, you better not even look in that direction. Have you guys ever given an example of something? Have you guys seen swarms of ants yet? How many of you guys have seen ants cover a sidewalk or something like that? It's hot, so you guys should be seeing that. It's very hot. 
they just swarm a sidewalk they're all over the place and every time you see something like that you're like well wow, where in the world do those things come from they're all over the place i've seen them on in fact i walked out on a driveway once and it was at night time there's no kidding this is real i walked out there and i was just standing admiring this guy and all of a sudden i felt this itch and this burn i looked down and i'm looking at my black shoes that the problem is i didn't have on black shoes I didn't have on black pants either, and the black started rising. Let me tell you what happened. Those things covered the entire driveway, and they covered both my shoe and my pants. So I had to do the only thing I could do. I stripped right there in the driveway, and I had to run in the house. I did. I had to strip outside. I had to literally strip. There was no shaking them off. You start shaking ants off, you're going to flick them you know, out from your leg onto your head. It was those, the thing about this, you know those little tiny ants? You guys know those little tiny ones, right? I mean, the tiny ones. And you know, in order for you to see an entire driveway covered in those little tiny ants, that was like a, you know, what in the world, like a planet of those things must have hit somewhere. And they all came out at once. But they covered the entire driveway and I stepped right into it. And they were, they were coming up quick. I mean, they were coming past the kneecap, so I had to strip quickly. You can't allow anything to go beyond that point. So I took everything off. I had to strip. But my point is, obviously, they've been under the ground the entire time. Obviously, they had multiplied. Now, I'd gone out there a thousand times not thinking about ants. My point is, they didn't begin that way. They began with one queen. And all the while, they had been multiplying. And nobody knew that they were even there, not in those numbers, until they emerged. And when they emerged, they have the ability to overwhelm anything that would step into that, you know, their vicinity. Well, guess what? You're in that situation right now. And how many years has it been that we've not dealt with any spiritual entities doing some hostile takeover in front of everybody? Hmm? It's been a long time, man. Very long time. Just how many are there? If they've been multiplying in the earth, doing what the Bible says they're doing, we have problems, don't we? Because while everybody else topside has not had to deal with them, they haven't been showing themselves to us to any large degree, but something has been multiplying in the earth. And they won't break their ranks when they visit every human life form on the planet. There will be not one continent that these things will not eventually be seen in. And you're talking about something that is not an ant. That's what we're in the middle of. If it were not for the bomb, then you know what a living horror is. You'd know that. Okay. You see, Mike, you usually said that there were messages sent. Oh, you see, look at that. There are always messages coming into, well, they don't really refer to them as sleeper cells, but coming into people here within the USCS. Listen, folks, we, we have a predicament here in the US. We do. And the genie is not going to go back into the bottle. It's not. Many of you are going to have to be willing to go all the way now but it's your prime opportunity to learn if you've never trusted in the most time before this is your prime opportunity not to come to become willfully ignorant of the truth not to go put your head in the sand but to realize the situation all around you in truth and learn to walk with the lord anyway even in the troubled moments because it's the troubled times of life that end up being the most precious did you guys say that's a fair statement? The most precious times in life are always the most troubling times in life. Yeah. This is also a time where real bonds can form in the body of Christ during times of duress. This is when you get to evaluate your shortcomings. Have you ever wondered whether you have enough faith when all these things manifest on the earth? Have you ever wondered, will I have enough faith to keep going forward? We have that question and then we face, we're about to face something that's really going to try us. And we don't know that in those moments of trying, that's when those questions we often ask can be answered. They can't be answered outside of a trial. It doesn't work out too well. Inside of a trial. And you know what the words coming out of the mouth of the flesh or soul? The flesh or soul, well, the, the flesh cannot sin uh, by itself. You have to agree with the desires of your flesh or the plans and plots of, the, of your flesh in order for it to come to fruition. You can't do anything without your approval. So in essence, 
everything that happens in your life is coming from the soul because you are the decision maker, right? Thank God for Christ. We all messed it up. None of us is going to circumvent that. None of us will. Remember that. How can I keep my faith in the Lord in these pressing times? Oh, Lord, help me. Well, uh, here we are again. Uh, um, you're able to observe your own weaknesses. I'm going to bring out a point here. When you can see you have a weakness in a certain area, who do you think allowed your mind to perceive the weakness in the first place? Your Lord did. So he opened up your eyes to what you have to work on. Now you make a petition to him and you say, Lord, look at this area of weakness. I do not want it. Here's your solution in this. See, that's why trials and tribulations are awesome. Yes, I said it. They're awesome. Because when they come, they try us. They open up to us the truth about us. And if we don't have these trials, if we don't have these times where these things are exposed, we would never know we have the weakness in the first place. When you discover the weakness or the shortcoming, that's when you take that to the Lord and say, Lord, you've got to fix this. You've got to fix it. Lord, help me with this. And then make a conscious effort to go forward in the Lord, right? Correcting that area of life. There are things in life. There are so many times in my life where God has uncovered these extraordinary things, but only in a time of crisis. Never can they be disclosed outside of crisis. Number one, because I'm not going to hear it. I can easily deny in peacetime and say, oh, no, I don't have that issue. I don't have that problem. But in a time of crisis, when all the games are done, when, when acting is not going to pay off, that's when you finally become acquainted with yourself. That's when you learn who you are. That's when you're reminded about these shortcomings. But you, I want you to remember this. It is your Father in Heaven who is permitting this, who's allowing this, who's opening up or, or allowing this time. Who do you think set up the trial and the tribulation in the first place? He did. And have you guys noticed that more and more as of late, God is showing us these critical areas. He's not showing us that these are not their early learning lessons. No, these are critical areas. I think it's awesome. Because if you have a weakness, those fallen ones, they will exploit it. Oh, they're going to exploit it. If you have a lack of faith in a specific area, these fallen will exploit that. That's why the Bible says, what? A man making up bridle his own tongue. Don't follow that person. So when it says, uh, I see E. Peter, will there be a kind of spiritual boot camp in the next year? I think so. Uh, no, I think that happens almost immediately. I do. I think that's going to happen almost immediately due to the nature of what people are going to... Well, think of this election, right? Do you guys really think this election is going to solve anything? I submit to you right now, uh, for example, today, there was uh, we, we have three mass shootings in the USA. Every day now, we're having mass shootings. Take President Trump, for example. You guys pray for President Trump. If that's your, you know, the, the person you're going for, then pray for him. There are people standing around him who called him a con artist. Not more than that was back in 2016. Didn't they call him a con artist? A rip-off artist and all this and the other? They called him every name in the book. For everybody out there who could be a Democrat, hear me on this. I speak for Joe Biden the exact same way. Listen, people change. Please remember that. People train. Leave a person being convicted in a court of believers up to the Most High who can do that flawlessly. But we got a time we're going to face, guys. And I'll tell you something. No one's going to sit in that position without our Father's knowledge. See, you have a lot of people out there. They're looking at Biden and they're, they're repeating things they've heard other people say or they're, they're just kind of hostile to it. I don't do that because I understand what leadership is. I will never criticize anybody's position in leadership because I understand what that is. It doesn't matter what type of leader you are, you're going to make sacrifices. It's going to be arduous. It's not easy. It is not. I understand the process behind it. So I have a deep respect for those who hold that position in the USA, regardless of what they've turned out to be, regardless of what people think they are. They're doing a whole lot more than I'm doing. How about that? I wouldn't want to sit in that chair. I would not. I know what comes with that seat, that position. And so my hat's off to them. But I will not bad, diminish, disrespect those guys either. Because I choose to engage that the Father's way, not the world's way. The Lord was quite clear. We're not 
to conform to the ways of the world. We were to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That requires the word of God. The Lord did not, you know, the people who were under King Nebuchadnezzar didn't call him a bunch of bad names. Daniel did not. Daniel was a devout believer in the living God, and King Nebuchadnezzar was a tyrant, a bloodthirsty, murdering tyrant. Did Daniel ever disrespect King Nebuchadnezzar? No, he did not. Did Daniel ever disrespect King Darius? No, he did not. Why can't we follow suit with those examples the Lord has given us? Why do we always have to side with violence? Also know this. The Lord said, be holy in all manner of communication. It is an unholy thing to talk about a person like their dog. I also know something else. The Lord said this. This is in the word of God. So folks, hear me. If we criticize someone, if we honestly criticize someone from our hearts, you know what the Lord said he would do? He's going to put you in that person's position to be criticized just like you're criticizing that person. So will other people criticize you. And the Lord said he will do that so that you understand that person's position so that you will not do that anymore. In other words, if only if I were an ex-president could I evaluate somebody doing that job. There are expectations on that seat, but I will not join in with the noise that will cast anybody down to the ground. There are lots of leaders I don't like the job they're doing, portions of it. But there are portions of the jobs that they do I couldn't even begin to keep up with. How about that? So I'll never, you know, form an illusion that somehow I'm capable, more capable than they are, because I'm not. What I'm capable of doing, the Lord will appoint me to. And that's a be, that should be sufficient for me. People change. People have vipers. I keep telling folks that there are folks around President Biden that are running this country. I would not want my favorite person. Well, we're going to go through some things. We will. And let's go ahead and face it. There's a lot of violence associated with this election. Lots of violence. It is. And we have to learn as the body of Christ, we have to learn that we're citizens of the kingdom. We have the power to petition the creator of all things who can change the hearts of men on the earth. Do you know that? For our sakes, the Lord can change the hearts of anybody he so chooses. He did that to Pharaoh, didn't he? He did that to King Nebuchadnezzar, didn't he? He did that all throughout history. Sometimes we act as though we don't believe there is a God. I've heard people say, well, we have to, you know, we have to do this. God won't do it. That's exactly what the word says. People would say that God won't do good nor evil in the last days. And that means God is not doing anything. We have to do it ourselves. That's what people would begin to say. The Lord called us to a standard. He called us to a standard. We're supposed to learn about that standard. We're supposed to be conformed to that standard of being a citizen for the kingdom. Not some, not another person in the world. I don't even want to echo what these people say in the world. But I can tell you this. You're about to see how violent people are. You're also about to see the true people, Trump and Biden, their true form. You'll see both. Don't get upset when you don't like the person they are. But there are some matters in the earth that we have to we have to learn to leave that to the Lord and do our part as citizens of a nation and do it in a holy manner, not a heathenistic manner, not some militant manner. We're called to a different standard. There are lots of people in the earth that will go out and shoot somebody else. God did not call you to go pick up a gun and shoot somebody in the head. There are soldiers who have not reached a certain point of salvation yet God has called. At different stages in life, you're called for different things. Haven't you noticed? The more knowledge you have, the less you're going to be engaged in. Young people go to war, don't they? Young people go to war. And then God begins to teach them almost immediately a slew of things. Because when God raises a person to a specific level, they're not going to war again with human weapons. They're not doing that again. They won't take up a weapon again. They won't do it. It's kind of like somebody said, well, what if somebody comes and they're trying to steal your food? What am I supposed to do? I got to defend my family. And I said, well, well, wait a minute. Back to reality. Never use a what if with the living God. Don't do that. Then I asked the person, have you had to shoot anybody to defend your family and your food yet? They said, no. I said, because the Lord will never place you in a position 
beyond that which you can bear. And he's not going to put you in a position that will compromise who you are to him. He's not going to do that. Sometimes we act like God is, is helpless and Christ is helpless. God forbid we continue to think like that. Is that how we do? Like the Lord can't do anything. So we have to do it all ourselves. We constantly think that the Lord's not going to protect our children. So we have to do it ourselves. I know differently. Oh, I know differently. No matter how strong you are, how skilled you are, without the Lord, you would have no children. Without the Lord, you wouldn't even have life. You would lose everything in your life. Without the Lord, it would all go dark. But with him, he allows us to have certain things. He shows us and teaches us and raises us to another standard over and over again through various means, whatever he chooses. When will we be honorable children of the Most High, that we would honor him and believe him over these things of the world? Anyway, that's how we are. Let me give you guys a story. Suppose a man, he did everything to protect his children. And he built everything to protect his children from these hostile people outside. And he worked himself day and night to do that. And he was very good at doing that. But he was getting older and he couldn't keep up the pace. And so one day, he didn't rebuild one of the secure locks. And somebody came in and they murdered one of his children. Say, let's say he had four children. And when he found out somebody murdered one of his children, he was just distraught and heartbroken because he worked all his life that nobody would be able to break in. So he works another tirelessly. He works another month, fortifying everything. And then sure enough, at the end of that four, four months, somebody else comes in and they kidnap another child. He's devastated, devastated. Then all of a sudden, war breaks out and everybody in his vicinity is taken out. So they translate. What's going to happen when he translates? Suppose the Lord came up to him and said, you know, he, he was upset. He's so glad he's reunited with the souls that were his children, but he feels like he failed them. Suppose the Lord conveyed to this guy, and listen, while you were trying to protect your children, I was trying to get you to see that everything was about to be lost. And while you were trying to have your children still stay in that one spot I was conveying to you that everything in that spot was about to be turned upside down and everything that was going to be in that spot would be lost and you fought against me wouldn't that be terrible not like these people who were in California and the storms kept coming in a certain area and they began to complain to the city well you need to do this and do this and do that and then the whole place burn up well all those people who took heed they left but all the people who did not take heed lost everything. What about Katrina? Before Katrina ever hit, people were preaching down there and they told people, hey, they moved those casinos on land. You might want to think about relocating. And sure enough, opportunities came where people could relocate. Oh no, they said, we're going to stay put. We're going to gamble and do our thing. No matter what comes. You knock us down, we're going to keep rebuilding. So the whole place was demolished. Do you know how many times warnings come to people to let them know because when god makes a decree that decree is that decree in the old testament he will tell people to get up and get out of the land i'm going to destroy everything in that place and if you're caught in that place you'll be destroyed with it get up and go the only way we don't listen to the most high is when we think we have solved the whole thing we get so fixated in not trusting him we cannot hear what he's telling us so clearly. Right now he's warning people. They're not paying attention. They will not utter the obvious thing. You know why? Because humanity thinks they're right. Whenever you think you're right, you're going to defend your position no matter what. Well, I'll give you this small piece of advice. Always let the Lord tell you what is good and what is evil. Always let the Lord do that. Please let the Lord do that. Never do that yourselves. Let the Lord do that. The objective here is not to save your life. The objective here is to be pleasing unto the Lord. The Lord said in these times, those who seek to save their lives are going to lose it. If you do seek to save your own life, you're going to compensate everything for your plan. What do you want, your plan or the Lord's plan? It'll be one or the other.
It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.